Ethical concerns surrounding Supreme Court justices, whether it be about receiving gifts, potential conflicts of interest, have been swirling now for recent months. And um, in November, they released an ethics code. It was 15 pages long. Do you think that goes far enough or do you think more needs to be done? Uh, to go back, Brittany, to my original point about there's no investigation. Nobody finds out what actually happened. They're just allowed to make it up on their own. That's the real flaw here. And if you have an ethics code, even if it's a very good ethics code, but nobody ever decides what happened, no neutral body ever compares the conduct to the rules, there's actually no process of evaluation, of enforcement, then you really don't have much of an ethics code. It's like saying you're going to follow the rules of baseball, except for that part about umpires. So you get to call yourself safe on base and you get to call your own balls and strikes. And that's just not the way it's supposed to work, particularly not at the Supreme Court, for Pete's sake. Senator, you've been raising the alarm on this issue for a while. I believe you have upwards of 31 installments of your speeches called The Scheme, where you detail different ethical concerns of the Supreme Court. Knowing this, being someone who's well versed in this situation, what do you think is missing from the com or conversation? Well, I think the um, thing that's missing from the conversation right now is the voice of the Chief Justice not just as one of nine, not just as a justice of the Supreme Court, but as the chief justice with the overall administrative and supervisory responsibility of the Supreme Court. And also missing are the voices of the very distinguished uh, judges who serve on the judicial conference. Now, quietly, the judicial conference has done some very good things to help clean up the mess, but there's a lot more that needs to be done and I think it would be helpful if the Judicial Conference spoke out more and picked up the pace of its remedial decision making. And what do you think is that number one thing that needs to be done today or first? Having an ethics code that actually has the key components of every other ethics code everywhere in the country, which is that if there's a complaint, somebody investigates it, somebody neutral decides it, and there's a decision at the end of the day. You don't just rely on the subject of the investigation to say, oh, that's not so, but never have to answer even a question.